Welcome everyone. Uh, today we will be discussing about a new topic. How to take notes from Harrison textbook of internal medicine or any other standard textbook of uh, medicine. See, uh, the problem with taking notes from a Harrison book or any other voluminous book is that uh, the volume to, from which you have to take the note is very high. So if you try to write up every point in Harrison into a separate note, it is only going to it's going to be time consuming and you will just make another copy of the book that is not going to be useful for you in any way. And also when you start taking notes from Harrison, especially the initial parts, it's going to be very voluminous. The pathogenesis, there are so many genetics factors, so many things you would have explained. And I would have, when I was initially trying to take notes, I would spend one hour, two hours making notes, but at the end of two hours I would have spent I would have made notes of nothing. So I felt it very useless and like irrelevant. So after spending almost like two to three years of reading the book and trying to using different methods of note taking, I have come to the conclusion uh, that this method works and I have taken note from every single topic of Harrison. I have like 13 big notebooks you know, that act as a source of my revision material. That notes are helped me clear my PG examinations even my super specialty entrance examination and that act as like a revision material. Whenever I come across a new case now, I mean something medicine when I read it, I go back to my notes and read it and that sticks in my mind better. So jumping into the topic, how do I take the notes from Harrison textbook of internal medicine? So we are all basically, all of us like MBBS doctors and PG doctors, uh, we are clinicians basically. So patient come to us with complaints. So we have to start from symptomatology. Suppose uh, I would uh, imagine me sitting in my OPD room or in a casualty room and the patient is coming. I will give him a name, a 47 year old male and some name and then I will start with the symptomatology of a topic. Suppose let's say pneumonia, pneumonia topic. So I will say like uh, I would say uh, like a 47 year old male coming with complaints of what are the symptoms of pneumonia? First symptom will be fever. The second one will be cough with sputum protections. And then third one will be breathing difficulty and breathlessness. Then there will be evidence of pleuritic chest pain. So we will write this from these symptoms that are given in Addison. These will be the first four points. Then going to the signs. Then I am went in, auscultated him and I examined him. I found his respiratory rate to be increased. The saturation, his so SpO2 to be decreased. And uh, auscultation, the, there will be evidence of Krebs or bronchial breathing. The vocal phlegmatism, vocal resonance were increasing. And all these uh, signs, and then once you come to meet the symptomatology, go to the investigation part. That's how we do it in hospitals, right? So follow the same method when we're taking notes also. Once the symptoms done, go to the investigation. Okay, what does the investigation do? A CBC. You will find the WBC counts to be in increased, suggestive of infection. And if the neutrophil predominance, if it's 80 90 percent neutrophils, you know it is a bacterial. Then you will come to the chest X-ray. Chest X-ray will show you a patch or a consolidation. That will uh, help us in confirming whether it is a infection or non-infected etiology. And then you will go to a, uh, the next thing, uh, sputum culture. I have said send sputum culture. So you will send gram stain, sputum culture, AV, all those things you send. And then at this point, you would have a clinical diagnosis of it is as pneumonia. Obviously, you are taking notes from pneumonia, so you will know there is pneumonia. Then go into the causes. Think of causes as the differential diagnosis. Okay, there is a pneumonia. What are the differential diagnoses? That is the causes. Like uh, it can be bacterial, viral, parasitic, fungal, and not other bacteria, virus, all those things you will have to make note from it. And then once you are done with the differential diagnosis, then go into the uh, treatment. Uh, treatment, we will start with an empirical antibiotic before the results comes. And once the results come, if, uh, there is a, if there is a risk factor of uh, uh, MRSA, you will have to add some other antibiotic. If there is a risk factor for pseudomonas, I would add this one. And, and once the uh, culture report comes back, I would, based on the report, I would add uh, whatever bacteria comes, this will be the antibiotic. So this way, how we manage clinically, we start taking notes the same way. So start from uh, symptomatology, go into the investigations, then go into the differential diagnosis causes, and once you have done that, then go into the management part. So this way, uh, whenever you take notes, you would be uh, sticking one to the most important thing for us clinicians and not wasting your time with all the other fat. You will try to trim the fat very fastly. Then uh, the second thing I want to add is that for every MD, especially for every MD residence, PG uh, medicine residents, it is better to have an up-to-date subscription because up-to-date uh, gives you, the, especially the management part is very good in it. It is very, even Harrison, the problem with management is will be very general, very vague. 
it won't be to the point but when you go to something like up to date you'll know what drug what dose how many days when the side effect happens what to change the exact protocols or the algorithms they are very good and up to date so yes uh, if you are it is a little costly but it is worth every cent that's what i would feel because uh, it will definitely give a, a, a clinical edge over just getting harrison harrison with up to date is a very good combination then the third thing i would only say i've done these two things and the third thing i mean i would say is that uh, taking notes in ipad see initially I was very reluctant i mean i didn't make any notes from ipad it's, it was the end of the my final year only i got a some making notes in ipad but what i feel is that ipad offers you an unique edge a unique edge in the sense that uh, in harrison the most important area will be the tabular column and the images and the lines below the images they will be very high yielding from the entrance point of view and he, when you use ipads it is very easy to crop that image or crop that uh, tablet column and paste into uh, the whatsoever notes you are taking. So it saves you a lot of time and uh, it saves you a lot of time and also it uh, you will have a better edge when you put the image, when you think of x-ray showing consolidation, rather than have that in writing, having an x-ray, actual x-ray image near it will increase your understanding. So if you practice taking notes in iPad, I think that is, uh, I mean, that is better. But if you are something like me who are practicing pen and uh, paper like uh, if that works better you can do that but try ipad like it is uh, really uh, easy and other thing i would say is that adding points like once you are done with the clinical i mean you have read harris and taken the notes added something up to date or something and then i would see or this is what next is that uh, have some mcq when they have that mcq books like uh, mcq notes or revision materials they will have some points of mcq significance can add those things also you should always have, have a space for adding stuff whenever you take notes from Arizona or any other source whenever you come across new points you will have to be able to add it and incorporate it into it so you should leave some space then and there uh, especially if it's an ipad it is a very easy thing to do you just have to add a new page in front or behind but if you're taking notes and pen and uh, notebooks you will have to have a little bit when it's a, once you complete a topic you have to have two to three pages left for adding this information once you are done with this, you will have a material that is good for your examination, theory examination, MD or MBBS, whatever you are preparing, that theory examination will be useful. And then it will also be useful for your entrance examination. And that will also serve as a clinical material or reference material when you have to uh, read some topic for patient management and everything. So it will be useful for you in every single way. I have personally done this uh, like so many topics. I mean, almost like. Uh, 200 to 250 topics of virus and i have done the same way and it is definitely useful for me so if you want to uh, have a try just try this for one or two topic if it works for you you can do it uh, a few of my friends use other methods like highlighting like how do they highlight is that they read the topic twice not before uh, first reading they don't highlight they read the topic twice at the point of finishing the second time they would know what are the important areas of this book Immediately they go and then they highlight. They'll take one for another 10 to 15 minutes and highlight and close the book. That uh, highlighting will be proper highlighting and all the creamy, all the like uh, the core content of the topic will be highlighted. And for the say, further, when they come back and reading, they will just read that highlighted part. That is also good. Uh, if uh, that works, you can try that also. So if you like this video, I would like you to subscribe to my channel, share this video with your fellow residents or uh, your co colleagues. Uh, it will be useful for them also. Thank you.